appreciate the great Tyler Glass now joining us right now from the Tampa Bay Rays. What's up, dude? How you doing? What's up? I'm good. Thanks for having me on. Appreciate it. Wow, look at that hair. Oh, stop it. Good flow. That is not. <laughs> stop it. Oh, stop it. <laughs> Dude, how's this series? Like, I watched the game last night. I know you guys didn't come out on top, but point for me was playoff vibes. Like, two young, hungry, competitive ball clubs. We're playing in July right now, and the stadium seemed like it was pretty lit up and excited for this. Yeah, it was crazy. I definitely think it's like a, it's probably like a anticipated series. I think, I think in the beginning of the year, if you asked who were like the first two top teams, I don't think anyone would have like assumed, maybe, but. Uh, yeah, it was gnarly. I think it definitely felt a lot more like, not postseason-y, but like closer to the end of season, like a, a lot more like cutthroat type of baseball yesterday for sure. So I, I want to get back to when I played against you a little bit, um, the couple times I faced you. So I want people to understand, facing somebody like you, first of all, you got the body stature of like a Randy Johnson, but from the right side, like looking like Shaquille O'Neal on the mound for one. You got you got one of the nastiest curveballs I've ever seen. You made me look silly, not not just once, but a couple times. But explain to the kids out there how you use that curveball to your advantage for one and how you started making it so good because you don't see many people throw curveballs anymore. And yours is just so deceptive and so nasty, especially since you throw that hard. I think like since I was young, uh, I've always been able to like supinate, just like get on the right side of a baseball. I think I got like weird, like strange, like wrist alignments, <clears throat> just being so tall. I walk around like a weirdo too. Like I got strange wrists, uh, but I've always just been able to like spin a ball well. Um, I always struggled with like command of it, especially when I was younger. But I think like the consistency of throwing it more often, I got a lot more comfortable with it. And I think as like I got stronger and I just became more like, like aware of my body, like better proprioception. I was able to kind of like put it into a zone. And like the only thing I think about now is I don't even necessarily try to throw it for a strike ever. I just try to throw it like as aggressive as I can and make it look like a heater. Like if I just threw a fastball down, I'm trying to throw it like 45 feet. I want it to look exactly like that heater. So if I like, act, if I'm say I'm trying to throw up with my heater, but I miss down, I'm just trying to make it look identical and there's a lot of times i'll throw it like it's tough for catchers like i'll really short change the catcher there and i have a lot of pass balls and stuff but i think for like swing and miss rate and for like tunneling purposes i just try to make it look like a heater and not necessarily trying to like drop it in unless it's like early in the count or something like that no doubt are you big, are you big on analytics are you are you studying your your pitches and all that kind of stuff as well uh, it depends on like, I like all the spin efficiency stuff and like, like when I'm good, when I'm bad, like what I feel, I think for me, like physical cues, I can feel I'm always going to be more like athletic approach. Like I'm not really going to like nerd out on stuff, but I think sometimes if I can marry the two with what I feel physically and what the metrics, what output I can get from that. And if I can kind of combine the two and like use that to make me understand when I'm throwing a good one, that's kind of what I do. So we have like X and Y breaks uh x and z see i barely know at the stadium it's like shows us like the vertical and horizontal metrics and i i look at that all the time like some people rate our peep i do both i rate our peep and i look at the two numbers and i just try to see like what which one's good which one's bad and a lot of times too you can tell from the metrics if i'm like late or if i'm early or if i'm something like that i can kind of just like expedite the the like adjustment process That's so it's amazing. been super beneficial for me no doubt yeah, Tyler, you're talking about your curveball, this and that. Like, dude, you don't need any of that spin. Like, your fastball, I'm telling you, Todd, this guy, if there was one pitcher in the major leagues that I got in the box and I had zero chance <laughs> of doing anything productive, it was Tyler Glass now. Dude, I hated whenever I had to face him. Like, I remember one instance in, at, the, at the trop. It was a 3-0 count. I'm like, yes, I've got him. I was like, hopefully he throws a ball here, but I'm going to take, but I'm going to be ready to swing like I'm ready. He throws me a fastball right down the middle, and if I would have swung, I, I would have, like the catcher was basically throwing it back to him as, <laughs> as I'm getting ready. Dude, the hardest fastball I, I, I've ever seen. But um, Tyler, I want to kind of ask, like, what did, like the Rays, man, like you, you obviously came from Pittsburgh. I got drafted by Pittsburgh, came up with the Pirates, and then got traded. You got to the Rays, man. It seems like the Rays – know exactly what to do with pitchers particularly because um, you see guys show up and just have instant success and become 
you know, the best versions of themselves. So I'm curious as to what it is that they do um, that get you guys <clears throat> feeling confident or being able to, to, you know, do what y'all are able to do whenever you get to Tampa. It's kind of a mixed bag. So generally, like a lot of times early on, I think, well, obviously they'll still do it now, but the formula is, I guess, a little bit more well-known is like they'll get a guy who has like unbelievable stuff, like metrically off the charts, and they'll and they'll come from an organization where like you they'll harp on like trying like up and away or low and away or whatever like aim to a smaller zone and try to like not nitpick but like throw a quality strike and they'll get a guy like that and they'll say like have the catcher set up down the middle and just make your stuff as nasty as possible because the chances of you actually throwing it down the middle and even if you do throw it down the middle the chances of them hitting it are still very low but if you're aiming down the middle and with your command like probably not gonna throw it down the middle as long as you're getting ahead and throwing strikes that's the most meaningful thing. And I think the biggest thing when someone's getting traded, obviously it's like maybe a lull in confidence, you know, you're not necessarily doing great and you come here and you, and you adopt that philosophy and you have a couple good games. And then now you have like a sick confidence and you're like, wow, I'm, I'm doing really well. And then that kind of just snowballs into something more and more and more. And I also think as like cliche as it sounds, and if you were to tell me this before I got traded here, that this was true, I would probably not believe you. Um, it's like the, the culture stuff. Like it, it, it's true. Like they're so good about like, um, I don't want to say like no rules, but like, it's, it's honestly like, I think within that, like old school baseball stuff, there was a lot of like, as a rookie, you come up and you have a lot to worry about. You have a lot to like, you don't want to step on anyone's toes and like, you're trying to be respectful and you're also in like a really stressful situation. You're like, you just got called up. You want to do well. And then you have all these other added things thrown at you. They're honestly just like, come up here and do whatever you want. Just don't be a dick. Like that's like the only rule and yeah. just <laughs> do whatever you want. Like they're awesome. Like there's times too, it, they're, they make like your life more like certain little things And like, this doesn't happen often, but you, if you were to be like, I want to go to like a wedding, like something, or I don't know, something like small like that, or maybe not like a wedding, but like th they're very open to like live your life. Like you're also a human being and it's just the most relaxed environment I've ever been a part of. Like, and you and I Brock came from the pirates, which no knock on them, but it was like very yeah. like military brutal. style, which is a, which is really <laughs> beneficial for certain players. Like some dudes do just well in that. Brutal. Like they love the structure. And I was, I'm just not wired like that. Like I have, a, yeah. I'm very much like, I got to be able to kind of like, obviously you need to be a good teammate, but you got to have like an, like autonomy and they, they were just good at that. I, I have a hard time understanding that because and not what you're saying about what Tampa's doing, but more where there's so many teams. I know this for a fact. You'll, you'll talk to people that work for front offices and the Rays are one of the teams that are brought up. They're like, our team's trying to be more like the Rays, right? In terms of their front office, their culture, their coaching, their development. So then why don't more teams copy that part of the equation? Like why are there teams that are still like more buttoned up about things when guys just want to be themselves and, and have fun. And then that'll unlock the best of their ability. I think it comes from like baseball was always so like unquantifiable. Like you never really understood. I guess you did, but like a lot, you know how like the money ball reference where they're like, the guy's got a good eye makeup and he's like tall and hand. there's like no real metric of like what makes a good player. Obviously you can see a guy who's good, but there was never like a concrete idea of how like to, of what like a good player was anywhere not as specific as it is today i guess like you have data on every single pitch like why a guy's good what his extension is what his spin is how accurate he is in the zone um like the rays have a 30 plus person r d team like they're just in there like coding their faces off and like it's just like all this cutting edge like all the data and they're like stripping through the data and finding the best arms and like maybe certain teams get overlooked certain guys get overlooked they find them and then they try to find their strengths i think uh, it's hard to mimic that, I guess, with like the R and D type of stuff, but I, I, I don't know. I think it was just before, like you all, you want, like, it's natural to just try to control something. Like if you own a team or you're a GM, you're like, I want to have control over the players. And I want to understand, like, understandably, you want to have like an idea of what's going on. And I think it was just like a lapse in like, let's control the way that they shave and they do this and they do that. Like we're a team and it's like very like the old school, like militant style type of thinking which isn't wrong it's just like i think it's just evolved a little bit past that so i think it's just people trying to like control too many things possibly i don't i don't know but that's just what i assume <laughs> like hey so talk about a guy that's not getting overlooked shohei otani man i i heard recently you talked about how his free agency should be making over the 600 million dollars i mean 
talk about him. Did the analytics at the Rays think about him? What do they think about him coming over maybe <laughs> eventually down yeah. the road? I saw some rumors that the two were like trying to get him. I'm down. I think that's a great idea. Um, <laughs> yeah. That's it's I'm sure it's going to take a lot to get him on the team, but he seems like a guy if you're going to spend, that's who you spend on. Um, but yeah, I guess too, from what I was saying, like in terms of it was hard to quantify talent, that guy's not hard to quantify. Like everyone, you don't even need to know anything about baseball. And you can be like, that guy's probably the best player. So he's just a freak. He's just unbelievable at sports. He's just, that's who he is. He's just good. <laughs> hey, what do you, do you want to see like, cause obviously you've got a great ball club. Do you get excited at the trade deadline? If someone strolls in, whether it's him or another big name, right? Because obviously you want to be with your boys and you, you're going through it together. But then at the same time, I mean, there's been past trade deadlines where a player will come out with a team and be like, yeah, we didn't do enough. And, you know, we wanted to see more faith from our front office. Are, are you thinking that way, too, where the team's like, hey, let's see who strolls through the door over the next couple of weeks? Oh, uh, I think everyone, I think too, like being like playing for the Rays is like, you're pretty much, you're used to having like a revolving door of players come through here. Like, it's just kind of how it is. It's like a lower market team and dudes are in and out all the time. And like, they take winning extremely serious. Like the front office is like, just, all, it's very data driven. It's like, let's not maybe get too emotional with it. Like who's good, who's bad. If this guy's better than this guy, we can plug him in and our team will be better. So, like, they, I don't know if there's too much, like, it would obviously, like, you want to go to war with your dudes and stuff, but I think a lot of people are always open to, like, you want to have the best team possible, and you're trying to, like, beat the best teams in baseball, and if you have any chance to, like, improve your team, then you got to take it. All right, Tyler, it's, like, overwhelming questioning going on from our, our chat here that we get live from our fans. They, they want to know because it's super timely. I know you've been asked about this a lot. You've got your doppelganger, and they're, like, Oppenheimer coming out. So I know you've been asked about it a lot. And how do you say the name of the, the Peaky Blinders, dude? Is, uh, is it Killian or Killian or Cillian? Or Thomas I, Shelby. Killian? Th- there we go. That guy. Well, <laughs> I think it's Killian. <laughs> Killian, yeah. So they're like, is he going to see the movie? Do you get asked about him a lot? Uh, yeah, I want to see it really bad. Um, there's a bunch of good movies out. Yeah, I really want to see Oppenheimer. I've wanted to see it for a while. I get, yeah, I get asked that a lot. Like that's like more than that. Like that's probably more than baseball stuff. I, I, <laughs> so like, yeah, I don't know. I've never met him. I do kind of look like him though. I, I see the similarities. Like my family thinks so as well, but yeah. <laughs> How come you haven't met him? I mean, I feel like you've been in the league. You've had enough dirt in your spikes. Like that, that should be set up with the social yeah. team or the marketing team. That's a miss. Uh, I, I think he like lives in Ireland and I don't know. I don't think he's like out and about too much. I think he's like mm. a kind of a home dude. I think he's like at home just chilling and then goes and acts and then leaves. You don't, seems like you don't a relatively he, normal dude. For being like you a don't think he's a too. big Rays fan? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, he loves the Rays, dude. He comes to the Tropicana field all the time. It's, uh, he, sits, he sits, he in sits out there by the Stingrays. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he likes, yeah, he loves the wildlife and stuff. It's great. So, yeah. <laughs> Hey, Tyler, question for you. I remember going back to the postseason. I think it was it was either last year or the year before. Um, Terry Francona said, man, Tyler Glass now is going to make every kid want to get Tommy John surgery because of how you've come off of that. So uh, do you have a PSA where you'd like to let any kids know, like, don't get it unless you really need it, but also don't be scared, right? Because it's worked out. And do you feel even better than pre-surgery? Yeah, I definitely would say don't get it. Like, try not to get it. But if you do need to get it, it's it's like pretty not foolproof. Like, there's always a chance of something like not going well. But like, I had, there's that new one too. I got with Doctor Meister in Dallas. It's like it's the double one. So it's like you get an internal brace and a, a UCL. So they take your palmaris and they weave it through, and then they put this like synthetic zip tie type of thing that like can pull a semi truck, and they like weave it into your arm. So it's like very strong and so i'd say like with where medicine and everything is like definitely don't be afraid just take your rehab seriously do that well get in really good shape and then like you'll be back to where you are for sure solid Sounds yeah good. i like yeah, that i, I like that i never had it so I, well I, you're not a pitcher well, obviously. i might now though i've been throwing bp like <laughs> at least two three hundred pitches every couple of days i get it get i get it, after dude. it I get Medicine. after it. Get it. <laughs> <laughs> you throw 500 BP pitches if you get it, dude. Think I, about well, that. <laughs> true. Yes. Bionic go. arm. 
All right, yeah. uh, last one from me, Tyler. So your team, in my mind, is underrated still nationally in the personalities that are there. We're talking to current players every day on our show. Um, give us like your best story about one of your teammates so far this year. Obviously, Randy's a total character. Yandy's got funny stuff to him. Like, w- w- what's the best moment you've had with one of your uh, like kind of colorful characters on the Rays so far this year? And if you have to go back in time, that's fine too. I think like the the Randy boots was awesome in twenty. That was always like that was like the brand new like the coming out of Randy. That was really funny. I love like Siri this year is hilarious. To, like the his like everything he does is funny and like the energy he brings is really really funny. Um, but yeah, Randy's always just like cracking jokes and doing something. And I appreciate too like the consistency and stuff. Like we had the Randy Land Day or whatever, and he was like sneaking like fifteen balls into left and like throwing baseballs out and like signing for people. And it doesn't really matter. Like that's a tough position to be in as a player, especially if you're like not playing well, you know, and you have to like maintain that type of like happiness. And no matter if he's like 0 for 4 or 5 for 5, like he's always just down to be a just joke around and be Randy. So I really like appreciate his consistency with it. Uh, But he's just always got just good vibes going. You know, a lot of people on our team do. Yeah, we've had a lot. We're we're big Rays fans here on Foul Territory. We've had uh, Rayleigh. Pete Fairbanks, we've had Brandon Lowe. Um, Lau. So, Brandon Lau, shit, my bad. <laughs> Gosh, dang it. You know, I always say that because I was teammates with Nathaniel, who it was Nate, yeah. but then he changed yeah. it to Nathaniel. So I was teammates with him, so that's why I always say You're that. the billionth like, person yeah. to mess that up, so you're good, yeah. Brock. Sorry. Um, um, Brandon Lau, Sweet and Lau. Um, yeah. Who's the next Ray we, we need to have on here? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, Maybe Cash? Yeah, oh, he's the best. I think Cash would be great on this. Um, yeah. I'd say as far as managers go or something, Cash is, is definitely the move. Uh, motor or hitting coach is, is good, too. You should have Motor on. And then as far as players, like, Shane's always – like, McClanahan's always a good time. I'd say he's probably – and he's nasty. Good pitcher, too, you know, meets both great requirements. Pitcher. So, maybe him. Yes, I like uh, that. Uh, yeah, yeah, I want to get Shane Mack. That's a good idea. Tyler, oh, awesome Colin Poche on. too. Colin Poche, that dude's hilarious. Do him. Colin Poche, okay. Yeah, I don't think uh, I've spoken. There to him we go. Before. Look, see, that's hey, that's why that the was the w- sneaky see, name I needed. Yeah, listen, yeah. listen, that's why the sure. Rays are so good, man. Because Tyler keeps just dropping names like, no, this. Oh wait, no. Oh wait, no, this. Oh, no, no, this guy. That's just they got a bunch of good dudes, man. A lot of them. It's, it's a TV friendly team though, too. Like there's a lot going on. Like you were talking about Randy's got his thing. Siri's got everyone wearing necklaces. Like it's, yeah. dude, it's been fun to watch. So we're enjoying it, man. Great to catch up with you. Keep doing your thing. Appreciate it. Thanks guys.